Hello and welcome to Wall Street Training's module on how to analyze a 10K. My name is Hamilton Lin, president and founder of Wall Street Training, and I have a background in investment banking and mergers and acquisitions. Having worked at Goldman Sachs' Investment Banking Research, Bank of America Securities' Mergers and Acquisitions Group, and several other smaller boutique investment banks, again, all focused on mergers and acquisitions. In this particular course, we will learn how to analyze a 10K, plowing through the footnotes and understanding the types of information we can extract from the management discussion analysis, the MDNA, the financial statements, as well as a detailed review of the variety of footnotes that are available to us in the financial statements. Please do note that this course and the materials from this course are copyrighted and may not be disseminated or reproduced without express written permission from Wall Street. The next item we will talk about is other, is other comprehensive income. For that, let's turn to a blank sheet of paper real quick. Folks, what are the major financial statements? We've got the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow. Those are three main financial statements. However, the fourth financial statement is the statement of shareholders' equity, sometimes or commonly known also as the statement of retained earnings. Those are the four major financial statements. However, in reality, there are actually five major statements. The fifth one is called OCI, Other Comprehensive Income. What is the significance of Other Comprehensive Income? Well, recall from our accounting module that if we look at our balance sheet on the equity side, the new retained earnings balance equals the old retained earnings balance plus the net income that you generated, basically, quote-unquote, earnings that have been retained, minus dividends. These dividends are basically re earnings that have been, quote-unquote, unretained, or rather, distributed to shareholders. However, if you were to do this actual calculation that we just wrote down here, you will never match. Why will you never match? Because you will have several items. You will have several items in which you need to reconcile as well to make this happen, and that is the other comprehensive income statement. There are three items here called PUF, P-U-F. Here's how you remember it. Any extraordinary adjustments to pensions, any extraordinary adjustments, not the day-to-day, -day, gets reflected into your comprehensive income. U stands for unrealized gains and losses. Your unrealized gains and losses, specifically on marketable securities, are also going to show up in this other income. For banks in which they are specifically trying to make profits on speculative activities, this unrealized gains and losses amount, that goes straight to revenue, actually. And last but not least, you have FX foreign exchange. Let's take a quick example of why this is an important footnote. For instance, let's actually take a look at Walmart. If you were to analyze Walmart's 2004 and 2005 10K filing, you will notice that a full 10% as well as a full 5%, this is the period that 04 as well as the 05, 10K filing, which technically ends January 31st, 05, and January 31st, 06, you will see that a full 10% and 5% of all of Walmart's revenues, the dollar change in Walmart's revenue came from foreign exchange fluctuations. Now, think about what that means, folks. Think about the implications as well as your basic knowledge of fixed of uh, foreign currency. In the last couple of years, in the mid-2000s, uh, the U.S. dollar has depreciated. The U.S. dollar has depreciated, which means, using these quick numbers, in the past, one U.S. dollar might equal one euro, using it as the base case. However, as the U.S. dollar depreciated, that one U.S. dollar can now only buy 75 cents euro. What this means is that one euro now can buy roughly approximately 1.25 U.S. dollars. This is not exact. You would have to take the reciprocal 0.75. But what we're saying here is that, again, the U.S. dollar used to be on par, let's say, with the euro. Since the dollar depreciated, the U.S. dollar can now only buy 75 cents euro, which means that one euro can actually buy 1.25 U.S. dollars, meaning that the euro has appreciated and gone up in value. Now, let's think about this. Walmart's revenue was actually $315 billion for the fiscal year ending 2005, January 31st, 06. The previous year's revenue was $285 billion. What this means is this is a difference of 30 or so billion dollars, roughly speaking. The dollar change in the revenue was $30 billion. Now, if you were to read the footnote on the other comprehensive income, as well as you could have gotten that from the management discussion and analysis, what we're saying here is that the foreign exchange fluctuations were as high as anywhere between three to so three to five billion dollars 
representing that this dollar change, actually a good amount of that came from foreign exchange fluctuations. Why is this bad for Walmart? Let me erase this portion over here as I need the side. Why is this bad for Walmart? Well, right now this is good because foreign exchange, they actually were able to capitalize on this amount. They actually had to increase the revenue, and for sure I'd rather see an increase the revenue than a decrease. However, what's important here is that in the future, if this amount were to ever reverse, again, if this were ever to reverse in the future, remember that if they were to make a dollar of sales internationally and get one euro, they can now get 1.25 US dollars. So this helps Walmart as the US dollar depreciates since they are a US based company based on foreign currency. The home foreign currency is the US dollar. But if this were to ever reverse in the future, that is the US dollar appreciates, and now we go back to let's say the common one to one, let's say. If that were to happen, what's gonna happen to Walmart's profitability? Well, again, think back to what happened in the past. One US dollar, one euro. One US dollar now only buys 0.75 euro, meaning that one euro can buy 1.25 dollars. Walmart has done nothing different to their operations, and now that same do euro dollar of sales, that same euro, can now buy more US dollars. So Walmart gets an inflated revenue to report without doing anything. Flip side happens now, going back to our exhibit here. If this were reversed in the future, that one euro now is only able to buy one US dollar if this were to reverse and the US dollar were to appreciate. What does this mean? This is what's gonna happen to Walmart's earnings. This is a toilet bowl. Walmart's revenue will go flush down the toilet because once again, they have done nothing and yet their dollar, their euro, that one euro now only buys them one US dollar instead of 1.25. So when this reverses in the future, Walmart's gonna instantaneously see a decrease in revenue without having done anything substantially different. Now, the answer to the question, two questions may arise. Well, why don't they hedge all of their foreign currency risk? Well, you know what? That's where we would have seen that in the derivatives footnote. However, it's not really possible to hedge three to five to ten billion dollars worth of exchange rate fluctuations. That would be a significant part of portion of the foreign exchange market, and they would effectively end up moving the market. So, from that idea there, it's not always possible to fully hedge a hundred percent of that. And if they were ever to reverse with unexpectedly, that would be a lot of hard cost dollars down the drain as well to purchase those contracts. The other question that you may be asking is, well. Isn't this also helpful or hurts Walmart right now because now the cost, since they outsource a lot, a lot of their suppliers outsource a lot of the cost to, let's say, China and Asia, where it's cheaper labor, now you say, well, now the cost of the goods has changed. And that will also have an offsetting effect on the revenues. Yes and no. Yes, because the revenue dollar, or no, because the revenue dollars is still going to be higher than the cogs, the cost of goods sold. One would hope, at least anyway, that that was the case. So therefore, the impact of the exchange rates on the revenue is still going to be larger than the impact on the cost of goods sold. Plus also, if you want to use China as the example there, since a, again, a fair amount of their production is outsourced to China, well, that's on a fixed exchange rate as of now anyways, so they're not going to have too much fluctuations there as well. So this is one of the important ideas or one of the important components of the other comprehensive income that you must dig into to really figure it out because that will truly reconcile the difference between the retained earnings and the net income because these dollars are not necessarily, not necessarily going to be reflected on the income statement. In this case, it may have been reflected for Walmart, but in general purposes, it may not have always been effect, uh, reflected on the income statement, and the only place you will find that is this other comprehensive income.